Hey everyone, Synchrony here. I'm here to talk about the living story again, and this time we just got the fractured patch, where we had the new fractals, specifically really, really exciting, the Thaumanova fractal with some story attached to it. I personally have been looking forward to this for a while. Oh, you know, I'm always, always interested in learning more about the Thaumanova reactor and just all the really cool backstory that it has. So I'm going to be talking about that. I will be going over spoilers uh, for this, so if uh, you haven't played yet then and, and you don't want to be spoiled, then maybe you want to wait until you've played it and then come back. But to be honest, basically if you go anywhere online that talks about Guild Wars 2, then you know what the spoilers are. So here's your chance to walk away and come back later. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to be talking about the fractured patch. We had that moment with Scarlet where she divulges really key insights as to the source of the Thaumanova reactor's power, in a sense, and and how that source, um, how its placement in Tyria among channels of dragon energy really makes it an extra volatile reaction, uh, extra volatile reactor in that spot, and how that can lead to really critical, you know, meltdowns as it did. What I'm going to focus on today is how Scarlet's kind of history, her, her whole campaign of chaos and terror throughout Tyria really fits very nicely into this dragon energy channel, these dragonic ley lines, ley lines of magic throughout Tyria. And these channels, as Scarlet said, seem to be really important. It's just that the Thaumanova reactor happened to be on sort of overlapping channels, and that caused the instability. One other thing we want to do, so just a little backstory about what these channels mean. I keep saying dragon energy and, and things like that. And for all you other lore savvy people, if you want to clarify this in, in the comments or whatever, please feel free to do so. I may not articulate it as well as others. But essentially, the balance of magic and dragons is always uh, fluctuating in Tyria. We have these supposed ley lines of magic flowing throughout Tyria. And in these ley lines, the magic ebbs and flows, increases and decreases over time. If at some point the ley lines become oversaturated with magic, there's so much magic there in the ley lines, the dragons who were hibernating before, who were just asleep before, awaken in order to consume that magic. Kind of each one balancing each other out. So then as the dragons consume magic, once the dragon once the magic reduces far enough, the dragons can, can go back to sleep until the ley lines produce enough magic again to awaken the dragons again. Okay, so keep that in mind and the links between the dragons and the magic. So I'm going to go right into trying to identify these channels. Now, Scarlet didn't talk a whole lot. Honestly, we got, what, like, a few lines out of her. And even though there wasn't a lot of development in terms of where the story is kind of going, the future motives, uh, we didn't get a lot of information there. But in the little bits that she said, the things that she confirmed and made possible by what she said really just opens up a whole new perspective on how to think about the Elder Dragons, the placement of different kind of facilities and things around Tyria. A lot more things start to come into focus and make sense by just the tiny bits of uh, insight that she, gave, that she gives us. Now, when we try to think about mapping these channels, she talks about the Inquest having the right idea, studying this dragon energy, and you know, thanking them for elucidating the channels that exist, at least in particular one primary channel that exists. And so I want to talk about what that channel is and where it is in Tyria. To think about it, we have to think about these channels as kind of like a network. Uh, this is really exciting for me because in my own research, I work a lot with uh, networks and mapping things out and stuff like that. So this, this kind of activity was really fun for me. So I started trying to map it out. And one of the key things we have to remember is that the Thaumanova reactor is a node in this network. Scarlet said, look, the Thaumanova reactor is at a juncture of the channels, of at least two. So usually in any given channel, you wouldn't have 
very much of an issue, but uh, the thalmanol reactor happens to sit at the juncture of at least two channels, and that's what's causing the instability. So keep in mind that the thalmanol reactor is one of the nodes, or at least is at the point of where two channels, at least two channels cross. Okay, so if we take that sort of as fact, then we kind of reverse engineer the paths and try to try to kind of identify, think about different key areas of Tyria. Um, in particular, since we're talking about inquests, we want to think about key uh, regions of interest relating to dragons and dragon energy. So I started mapping it out and looking at, oh, where, like, where is Zaitan, where's Kalkatoric, where's all these things, and try to map out paths that way. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but the one, even even closer than that, thinking even more closely identified to the Thalmano reactor than dragon magic itself, which is something that we have to speculate about, there is one actually firm connection across Tyria with the Thalmanova reactor, and that's the source of the Thalmanova reactor's power, which are the Chaos Crystals in the Chaos Crystal Cavern. If we take that cavern to be another node, keep in mind that we have these creatures that are flashing in and out of those spots, Thalmanova reactor and the Chaos Crystal Cavern, also kind of in Brisbane Wildlands, that lower area, but I, I kind of consider that to be a joint area with Thalmanova reactor. That may be wrong, but I'm going to count that as one spot. So that area, Thalmanova Reactor, and the Chaos Crystal Caverns, if we think about those as a channel, let's just sort of, you know, we can't say for sure, but if we were to kind of draw a line from Thalmanova Reactor to Chaos Crystal Caverns and kind of extend it out both ways as well, call that a channel, and see what lies on that path and if anything, you know, important is there. Well, when we do that, we see some really, really interesting sites that lie on this channel, on this path between Thalmanova Reactor and Chaos Crystal Caverns. If we think about Scarlet's campaign, remember, we're trying to think about how this relates to Scarlet now, because she was saying, oh, you guys messed up, but at least you clarified the channels for me to use, or for me to just make use of that knowledge, and now I won't make the same mistake you guys did. Now, if we, if we think about Scarlet, then, what we'll notice is, very interestingly, every step of her campaign of chaos or whatever, aside from Divinity's Reach, if we think about every other step of the way, Scarlet's facilities, her hideouts, lie on this path. All of them. If we start heading west from the Chaos Crystal Caverns, we see the area of the Molten Facility, in between Wafer Foothills and Diesa Plateau. If we keep going west, we see the lake in Lornars Pass, where the steam creatures are, that whole area where the steam creatures are really thriving. We see that, by the way, over by the steam creatures, we have a skill point with a portal. That portal has the same exact animation, at least, as the ones that Scarlet has constantly been walking through recently, that has kind of the steam... Like, it looks like a boiler room, basically, that she's walking into. That portal is the same portal that we see at the skill point in Lornars Pass by the Steam Creatures. Okay, so we have Flame and Frost. As we keep heading west from Chaos Crystal Caverns, we have the Steam Creatures, which have been implicated in Scarlet's uh, attack of the minions and whatnot. If we keep heading west from there, we hit Lion's Arch, where we had the Aetherblade hideout and facility there. And then we keep heading west, and we have the Viathan Lake, where we had the Nightmare Tree. And then if we keep heading west towards Thalmanova Reactor, we hit Twilight Arbor. And then there we have the Aetherblade facility within there. And then finally we hit the Thalmanova Reactor. So really, really, really interesting channel here. I think it essentially accounts for all of Scarlet's activity in Tyria, not based in Divinity's Reach for that one moment. And so it seems like this is one of the main channels. Scarlet is uh, trying to utilize the energy uh, located along this path for her own means. We don't know exactly what she's aiming for yet, but this video is really about just kind of mapping the paths and seeing what's there and, and what, what the patterns are. So that is just a really neat way to tie all of the disparate 
living story segments together along this path. So whatever Scarlet is doing, she's using the draconic energy along in this path, in this channel, and she's trying to use it for something. What that is, we don't know. Okay, so that's the first kind of primary channel. And I think that one just says so much already. That's kind of the go-to channel, I think, for the living story. If we want to speculate about the living story, we want to look there first and then kind of branch out to other possibilities from there. So let's talk about those other possibilities. If we want to track the magic, if we want to track where the magic is, we probably want to track where the dragons are or where they've been. And keep in mind that we are looking for a network. So we've, let's say we found this one channel. Let's say Thalmanova Reactor and Chaos Crystal Caverns is one of the channels. Where are the other channels? Again, we use the Thalmanova Reactor knowing that there, is, that there are at least two channels intersecting at the Thalmanova Reactor. We can again use the reactor uh, as sort of a reference point to then connect to other areas of interest around Tyria. If we do that, let's start looking at the dragons. Let's look at Zaitan first. So if we if we plot a line from the Thalmano reactor down to Or, or sort of the Ara waypoint as well, that, that general area, and then we start looking at what lies along that path. For me, as, you know, in anything dragon related or scarlet related, I'm always looking at inquest activity. What kind of inquest activity do we see along these lines? Because the inquests are the ones who develop these techniques for localizing dragon energy to a certain extent and trying to exploit that energy. So if they have activity in a certain area, chances are there's dragon energy there. So our paths will hopefully, in some sense, uh, overlap with the facilities that exist from the inquest. So, if we follow the Zaitan path uh, from, I map it at essentially the, the city of Ara, the ruins of Ara, whatever, to the Thalmanova reactor, we see that in uh, Malkor's Leap, there is a facility that the inquest use to produce these very powerful golems. We don't know too much about it necessarily, at least I don't. If other people want to clarify that, please feel free to do that. But we know that here they produce kind of extraordinarily powerful golems. So it's possible that they harness some kind of energy there to power these golems. Maybe. I'm not sure. As we go along, we pass through the Tarnished Coast. The Tarnished Coast has been described as an area that's heavily infused with magic. And we see a lot of the kind of um, remnants of this magic uh, through Asurian uh, areas as well, Metrica province especially, we see a lot of the floating geology, the floating rocks, all that stuff, the labs in the sky, uh, all those kinds of things. It may be because it's on, the, on a ley line of magic, and so that fuses into the geography and produces these strange effects that we see. I don't know, maybe. These are all speculation at this point. The only one that I'm really concrete about personally, is the Chaos Crystal Caverns channel. Zaitan channel, maybe, maybe not. There may be some elab elaboration that needs to happen there, and maybe we'll, we'll find out something else soon. Another obvious place to look for dragon activity is the Crystal Desert, where Krakatoric set up its home base recently. Uh, keep in mind, like I said, the ley lines ebb and flow, and so when magic gets oversaturated, the dragons wake up and go and consume it, presumably at its source, or at its highest concentration. Krakatoric woke up very recently, at least in-game very recently, something like four, four or five years ago, to the point where you see uh, along the branded line, you see Char talking about, yeah, I, I lost my entire war band to Krakatoric. Uh, they all got branded or crystallized or whatever. So relatively very recent occurrence. So we can imagine then that the magic there is still very, very strong. So again, if we use the Thalmanova reactor as one of the nodes and we draw a line to the Crystal Desert where Krakatoric is, 
and we examine areas of interest along that path, we see that in Mount Maelstrom, the path passes directly through Crucible of Eternity Dungeon. So that, again, is another really interesting coincidence. These are really coincidences at this point because we are actively looking for these areas. So it's kind of, you know, we take a week and get, and we happen to get the Crucible of Eternity. That seems very, very interesting. It, it would make sense that it lies on a path of dragon energy, dragon magic. So it's really compelling to think of that. We're not sure yet. If we keep going west from the Crystal Desert to the Thaumanova Reactor, we also pass through South Sun Cove. And at South Sun Cove, we have the Karka, who are, you know, obscenely strong. They're really aggressive. So those are some areas of interest there that might account for some activity. There are a couple of other possibilities that exist. I think these are less likely, but still interesting to speculate, and maybe some of you can come up with better explanations for this. Let's say that some of our channels are correct in that the Thaumano Reactor is the point of overlap at some of some of these channels. If we then kind of look outside of the Thaumano Reactor and see how the other sources of energy are interacting, we see some other relationships as well. For example, if you connect the Crystal Desert to Ore, we have a path that roughly crosses through the mouth of Abaddon, the, the Ring of Fire island chain, where a lot of Abaddon-related activity happened in Guild Wars 1. So that could be something interesting there. I, I definitely don't want to speculate about that one too much. Like I'm, I'm out of my element there. So if someone wants to talk about that a little bit, maybe there's something there, maybe there's not. It's really unclear at this point. Also, I didn't really include Jormag here because we really don't quite know where Jormag is. And even if we did, if you draw a line from Thaumanova Reactor all the way that far north, you don't even hit most of the world map that we have available to us. So it seems sort of unreasonable to try to do that. Okay, so that's a lot of kind of neat coincidences. You know, the Thaumanova Crystal Cavern channel, I think, is real. I think we can't really dispute it too much. It just lines up so perfectly and in two places that already had such a high correspondence, such a high association with each other that to then connect them and see Scarlet's campaign kind of play itself out across this path seems too strong to ignore. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. I'm, I, the thing is, <laughs> with Scarlet, with every living story installment, it's like debugging a program, basically. We're like debugging the living story. For every one piece of information that we get, we have like 206 more questions that we want to answer. And uh, we're being fed very slowly, so uh, I'm not sure what it all means yet, but uh, maybe we have some ideas from you guys. One thing I've been trying to do, think about these paths with respect to the those fiery do not touch thumper things that have been spawning throughout Tyria in this last patch. I've been trying to make these marks uh, again uh, to see if it, if they coincide with any of the thumpers. It's honestly a little bit unclear. In drawing these lines with, with respect to the thumpers, we kind of see what we want to see. Like, for example, if you draw from the Thaumanova reactor to the Crystal Desert, you see that the line passes through a lot, you know, essentially a lot of different points. The same with the Chaos Crystal Cavern. But, to be honest, it's not that clear. It's, it's just, maybe because, maybe because it's not meant to be overlapping exactly. The point is that whoever put those down, maybe Scarlet, maybe not, is now trying to find those channels, and so the sensors are a little bit sort of disparate. They're, they're kind of spread out in various areas, so they're not meant to be sitting on top of ley lines of magic. It's because the whole point is that they're trying to localize those ley lines. So it's not really clear. Maybe that will clear itself up later. All right, so, you know, it does seem like this perspectives, looking at the channels and, and trying to identify those, it seems like that opens up so many more possibilities, so many more ways of thinking of the living story, and in a way kind of makes it much more complex than what we originally thought. 
But so in that way, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, so much more work to do to kind of keep up with everything and all the possibilities. Before I was trying to, I was trying to look into the living story to constrain it, to kind of narrow down the possibilities. And now with these channels, they just blew up. Like there's, there's all these different things that could be associated now. So I'm just trying to kind of keep my options open and see what other things uh, come to light in the future. But even with that complexity, I think even if we focus on just this channel that lies on the path of the Thalma Nova reactor and the Chaos Crystal Caverns, and possibly you know extending out in both directions, we don't know. Uh, if we just look at that channel, then we can still get a lot of really cool information, and it really helps to explain, at least for me, someone who's been investigating this and, and really investing a lot of time into understanding what's going on in these different areas. To me, it adds a lot of flavor and possibilities to, to describing a lot of things that we take for granted in our daily kind of travels of Tyria. So first, the one that struck me the hardest was this path, you know, as it passes through Twilight Arbor, the first thing I thought of was the, the giant jungle worm. You know, that meta event just below Twilight Arbor. We have that dynamic event chain where Gamerian, this Silvari, is kind of going through and, and trying to just get a sense of the corrupted, dark, evil kind of presence there. And he goes as far as to say that, that that presence is not based on the Nightmare Court. It's something else, something darker. And I and others have said that that could possibly be some of the sources of a jungle dragon or something, you know, similar. It could just be that this draconic energy that, that's kind of constantly flowing through Tyria on this channel is causing that. It's in the ground. It's in the earth. This energy kind of transforms those areas. And in this case, it happens to have a very serious effect in that area, kind of corrupting the ground where you see the blighted growths and things like that. The, the husks that um, come up from this event chain are also... Uh, blighted as well and the jungle worm itself has this more evil darkness to it than uh, you know something else so to me that was one of the coolest things it was like oh man this path passes right through that and to me that addresses the kind of evil in that area none of this is 100 percent, but i mean we have to start trying to put these pieces together so that's something Another kind of spot along the line of the path that, that is not necessarily related to Scarlet, maybe, maybe not, is through Lion's Arch. I mean, it is related to Scarlet in the sense that Lion's Arch had the Aetherblade hideout, but I'm thinking of something else. Also running through Lion's Arch is the Consortium, and the Consortium is tied to the Fractals. The Fractal Portal is right, essentially dead center in Lion's Arch. It sits right on top of the channel that we're talking about. So the fractals could be utilizing some of that power, some of that energy that Scarlet is also trying to harness and use for her own, you know, diabolical purposes. I think the consortium are, are just trying to make money, you know, just trying to make a buck. But Scarlet is using that same, uh, with the same principles, is doing something more dastardly and evil. Okay, so that's that Dessa and the Fractals being kind of right, sitting on that path. Uh, might be something interesting there. We don't know. But it does fit with the with the theories that Dessa and the Fractals, she's kind of stuck in time. Every Everything has pointed to Scarlet being able to, to a certain extent, bounce back and forth through time. So you guys can theorycraft about that. I don't know enough about Fractals and Dessa to really say too much. But I think a lot of people are really captivated by that idea. If there's anything from the new patch that has captured people's imagination and attention, it's Dessa and the Fractals and the, the intrigue and mystery locked in there. So if you want to hang on to that, if you want to just latch onto that and take that speculation for a ride, I strongly urge you to do so. It's really fun to kind of really investigate and explore. But that, the idea of Fractals and, and Scarlet's own kind of mingling with fractal ideas uh, brings me to my next point. Think about the What Scarlet Saw story where uh, she says many things. We, we get a lot of information from that story and, and most theory, a lot of theories are built, you know, f the foundations of the theories are, are built from that story. One thing that is really interesting is one of the things that Scarlet says, among the many others, 
is that, you know, she has this vision, right? She sees some things and she sees, and she says, I will watch empires fall and I will watch continents burn. In finding the channel, she has access, you know, we think of it as, oh, she can access any point in space and time. It's whatever she can do, wherever she needs to go, wherever she, whatever she wants, she can do. And I don't think that's the case. I think she has a lot of leeway within that channel. If she wants to travel back and forth in time within that channel, she can. Do, she has found, in whatever way she does it, she has found a way to do that to some extent. But outside of that, it's not really clear. But what leads me to think that with, it's only within this channel is that quote. And if we think about the history of Guild Wars, empires falling, continents burning, a couple of really big things come to mind. The first, continents burning, that's the faux fire. That's Ascalonian catacombs, you know, story mode, getting all that lore from there, the continent burning. That, the faux fire, I mean, in general, you know, Ascalon, that, the faux fire reached very far. And so to say that anything happens to be within the range of faux fire is sort of like, mm, you're kind of like, shooting fish in a barrel there. Everything is going to be, every path is going to be essentially leading through there. But maybe, maybe not. The path, this channel, does lead into Ascalon and it is located very close to the city of Ascalon. And so to say that she's going to watch continents burn, she could time travel back to that time and watch that event happen. Because, only because it's on that path. She can't say, oh, I'm going to go back in time and, and go to uh, Sparkfly Fen for the Bloodstone. Like, she's not going to say that because presumably I'm saying that since it's not on that particular channel, she cannot do that. The other one is that she will watch Empire's Fall. Uh, there may be a better example than this, but what I, what I was thinking was the fall of the White Mantle uh, in power over Krita. The White Mantle were a group, you can read about them in the lore, uh, in the wiki, but they were in power, and they really had the monarchs of Krita in their grasp. The Battle of Lion's Arch marked the change in the monarchy. Uh, Queen Salma got put into place. The White Mantle overturned the fall of the White Mantle Empire. That's how I interpreted that, and that happens in, at the Battle of Lion's Arch. So again, right in that path. So, very interesting, just really neat kind of coincidences, and, you know, maybe coincidences, maybe not. Alright guys, I'm going to cut in here real quick. Um, I'm going to just stand up on a tiny little soapbox about the living story real quick. Um, you know, we see a lot of controversy, let's say, around the living story, but in this one in particular... I think what people are not appreciating, a lot of people, a lot of players either don't understand or um, or they don't appreciate how huge of a shift this is in how we understand lore. What Scarlet told us here in this fractal, what she confirmed, what this opens up, is it just completely transforms how we evaluate the lore from now on. I want to be very clear about that. The possibility that any given event, any given storyline, story arc, character, that these things can lie on a particular ley line, on a channel of magic, and that this can have an effect on the story. The idea that a creature can exploit these channels, can exploit these ley lines for their own use in gaining power or whatever it is, it's honestly a paradigm shift. Every single storyline that we're presented from now on, will, though, the first question will always be something like, where is it? The second question will always be, does it fall on a ley line? I'm telling you, this, this has huge, huge potential for future storylines. And honestly, I see this kind of um, uh, network of ley lines and someone, not Scarlet likely, but someone uh, or some group of people or something are going to be researching this. They are going to be driving a lot of the stories from now on. I think for the next few years, we're going to see a lot of this. You know, whether you like it or not, I don't know. I think it's phenomenal. I think it's fantastic. 
The thing about looking at networks rather than individual places is that it just enriches the lore to such a huge degree. You have to take into account other things more than just where it happened and who was involved. The idea of the magic in an area, the, the idea of the amount of magic in that area, chaos rifts in that area, what that means, um, I mean, I'm telling you, it's huge. A lot of people... A lot of people aren't seeing that. A lot of people aren't appreciating that. Uh, and that's okay. That's that's not necessarily their fault because, you know, I can appreciate that some of the story has had, you know, questionable execution. But um, just is in whether or not you like Scarlet, uh, you know, whether, whether or not the pacing necessarily has been appropriate or not, this shift from the shift into the idea of ley line networks is huge do not underestimate it and and i think you i think you need to get used to it because i think there's going to be a huge um for the story arcs coming up in the future of guild wars so i just wanted to say that real quick